The moderator recognizes Alex Rahill, Director of Church Planning for the Evangelical Covenant Church, to present on agenda item nine for church planter commissioning. Joining Alex on the stage will be Alan Tumpkin, Director of Church Planting for the Great Lakes Conference, as well as Phil Carr and Cynthia Carr. Information on this agenda item can be found on page 35 of your delegate notebook. But first, we are going to watch this church planting video. Church planting is not about the new fresh thing. In my heart, church planting is about staying on mission for our cities, for our regions, for our countries, for people that don't know Jesus. We need to have that missional focus, and church planting, I believe, does that. I never expected to, to be planting a church, let alone pastoring. Everything in my life was geared in a different direction, but in 2015, had a significant burning bush experience that changed the trajectory of my life and made it very clear that God had a different plan than the one I had set for myself. 2017 came around and a group of six and myself made the move from Calgary, Alberta to Vancouver, British Columbia. Big move, different cities, different place, didn't know anyone. But in 2018, uh, by God's grace and God's faithfulness towards us, we were able to plant City Collective and, and begin our, our journey as a church. When we moved out here to the Vancouver area, we uh, we recognized pretty quickly, it's not cheap to live out here. Uh, we were a young crew, so we didn't have a lot of income. So we got a space, a communal living space. We committed to one year there, and we made sure it was big enough so that we could host people. And we made a commitment that for the first nine months of moving out to here, here the Vancouver area, we were going to begin the process of just inviting people to share a meal with us. So for those nine months that we had after we moved out here, we saw 250 unique individuals share a meal with us. In that period of time, I met my wife, planted single, got married in December 2019, and then uh, COVID came in March 2020. And in the midst of so much that we were seeing God moving, uh, it, was, it was difficult. Post-COVID, you ask real questions. Do we continue? How do we, how do, we do this faithfully? And that consistent theme of, I'm, we didn't do this because this was my idea. We did this because we believe this is God's idea. And so we're gonna trust God to be faithful and God to show up. And so we had to be really honest and we leaned in, into the space of prayer, uh, made sure our reliance was on, on the spirit and not on ourselves. And that had to be the foundation that we built off of. Uh, we cut back on certain things and leaned hard into other things, uh, not by our anecdotal evidence that we saw around us, but by the leading of the Spirit. Prayer became really primary in that process. And then over the course of that time, we saw God answer prayer. Seeing God's work in the lives of our community has been the most exciting part of being part of our, our church family. We are gifted as a church to be this like beautiful uh, mosaic of, of individuals that are coming from different spaces of life, different cultures, different experiences, socioeconomic status, converging on this one place with this central desire to, to worship Jesus, to come to know him better, to be in relationship with him. And what we've been able to see then is people that are not within a, a Christian framework come to our doors. They come through our doors, they experience the beauty of community, they hear the good news of Jesus, and the Spirit does the rest. Uh, God's been faithful. When we first began the conversations of starting City Collective, uh, we didn't have a clear picture. What we were gifted was little glimpses. Uh, glimpses of God saying, oh, you're meeting around the table. That's something that will be part of your story. This commitment to prayer, that's gonna be part of your story. People of different backgrounds and ages and demographics, that's part of your story. And we began to see this picture where we can see a church that's that's full of this, this life with this missional focus to reach our city with the good news of Jesus, but to do it with not a hierarchical approach, but a coming together of the table. Bring all you are, now that which is uh, full of life and that which you feel is dead. Bring it to the table. And we know at the table we find the Spirit of God that meets us 
transforms us and then leads, leads us forward into the church we want to be. We need new churches in our cities, in our regions, because new churches are ingrained with a missional focus. You can't start a church if you don't have a missional focus. It's not about the new fresh thing, it's about being faithful to what God wants to do in a city, in a region, in a country. That's the church that we want to be, and I believe that's the church God's calling us to be. Isn't that great? Yeah, you can cheer. This is the good news part right here. This is good news. And uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to worship with uh, Pastor Jason and City Collective, and the Spirit of God is moving in that place in a powerful way. And against all odds, that church did not just survive through COVID. God has opened their doors, and I was there on a Sunday where I was able to witness three baptisms and hear testimonies and just hear about the amazing way that God is drawing people to himself through that humble, uh, authentic, Christ-following community. Amen? And this is what we pray for all our churches. And I'm here, my name is Alex Rahill, and I'm so grateful to serve our church planting movement. And when we say that word, the, the, what we just uh, saw up here, these new member churches, many of those churches started as new churches that we all planted together. They weren't done by one person. It was three strands strong, the local church and the conference and the denomination. And what you just witnessed is a church that was planted five years ago. And how they have now uh, continued to flourish and do faithful ministry in their community. And we're about to witness, we're not about to witness, we are about to participate in the commissioning of a new church today. And I love when we do it here because this is the embodiment of who we are as covenanters. Amen. Mission Friends is our name. I wish I would, can I put that on the agenda? We go back to that name. I just would prefer that. So it's the heart of who we are. It's what drew me to this community 25 plus years ago through my church, which adopted into the covenant. And we are represented here, the local church and the conference and the denomination, paying attention to the sacred work that God is doing in our midst. But I have to tell you something. Why do we plant churches? We must constantly come back to this question. We do not plant churches because it's trendy or a fad or some great idea we came up with. We plant churches because this is what it means to be obedient to the commission Jesus gave us. We join God in God's work to see more disciples in more populations in a more caring and just world. It's us following the command of our Lord Jesus, who said, as, I, as the Father sent me, what did the Father send Jesus for? To bring forgiveness, to bring healing, to bring reconciliation to bring hope. Don't we need hope? I need hope. And my hope is in him. And my hope is in his church. He said, as the Father sent me, this is one of his four commissions, by the way, so, anybody, can you finish this with me? So send I you. That's us that we now go to show and share the love of Jesus. And the early church, as we read the book of Acts, embodied this. We're told in Acts 13, as the leaders gathered together, just like this, praying and worshiping. I'm going to read it to you here so you can hear specifically. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, you know, the Holy Spirit still shows up. Amen? Amen. Do we expect the Holy Spirit to show up in our midst 
and bring renewal in our lives and in his church. And I do believe that, and I'm praying for that. The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And what did the church do? So after they had fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. They placed their hands on them and sent them off as an extension of that body. And the two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went. And so we, led by the Spirit, we gather here today to participate in a sacred trust that the church has been participating in for 2,000 years. And we commit to faithfully participate in that. We are joining God in God's work. And so we led by the Spirit Commission this new church. These two planters, Phil and Cynthia Carr, planting new evangel covenant church in the city of Detroit. And when we do that, we say we commit to you as you commit to us because they commit to us. It's a covenant. We call this a covenant agreement because we're covenanting, we're covenanters, with God and each other to do this work together, relationally. We're, that's why we show up to these events, not because they're always easy. Hey, by the way, how many of you are glad we're not going to vote on this? All right, you're going to vote some more later, but just know this is free, okay, right now? We come relationally and spiritually and financially. So, Madam Moderator, we are presenting the following church planter to be commissioned live at this time. Phil and Cynthia Carr, New Evangel Covenant Church. And Phil and Cynthia now are going to sign this agreement. Alan Tumpkin, the director of church planning, is going to sign this agreement. I'm going to sign this agreement. And they have been faithfully serving Christ in the city of Detroit, pointing people to Jesus, making disciples, and advancing God's kingdom. So will you please sign Amen. Now, I know you're sitting a lot, so I'm going to ask you to stand because we are going to literally, we're going to pray for them. Pastor Alan Tumpkin, who I love and appreciate as a friend, and we've been in ministry together for many years, and Phil and I go way back as well. But Phil and Cynthia represent one of six new churches this year. And the exciting, beautiful opportunity we have is we've had over 20 potential candidates for future assessment of new churches, and we already have 17 uh, candidates who are prepared to be assessed in this next season, which is our largest number since COVID. Yes, you can clap for that. <laughs> Pastor Allen, will you please lead us in a prayer of blessing? Would you extend your hand? Our Father in God, we thank you. We thank you so much that you've given us this privilege to send people out to reach people for Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for that, but I, but I stand in a, in a sense of, of trembling and even nervousness because I, having planted a church, I know how hard it is. I know the sacrifice that's, that's, that, that we need to have in order to, in the grind, in order to do this work. And I offer uh, Phil and Cynthia to you. And God, I first stand before you and I ask that you will rebuke the devourer because we know that the enemy wants to come even right now because it is through church planting that people actually come to know Jesus Christ. We know that they have the tongue of the learned and now they are able to open their mouths and speak the good news of Jesus Christ and the enemy hates it. And I'm praying, God, in Jesus' name that you will rebuke the in enemy and that you will give them the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to walk into that gift, that they would walk into the gift of evangelists, that they will realize that they're not going out in order to find new church members, but they're going to bring people to Jesus Christ 
and disciple them by the power of the Lord. I ask God that you will protect them and that you will protect their core, that you will give the core a heart to run through a wall, not for them, but for Jesus Christ, that they're going to stand up and support this, this ministry, and that they too will have gifts of evangelists, that you will put in a gift of evangelists on every one of the core members, that they know that it is not just their work, but it is all of their work in order to do the work of Jesus Christ. I pray for your help. I pray for your help, and I would, get, I would pray also that you would put your arms of love around Phil and Cynthia. And because at this time, the enemy would not only come to destroy the church, but to destroy, destroy their marriage. And so I'm asking God that you will give them eyes to see the enemy coming and that they will have the courage to say, be gone, enemy, because I'm here to do the work of Jesus Christ. God, may your hand be on them and the love of God will keep them and the power of the Spirit will comfort and drive them and to be self-sustaining and to reach people for Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you for this wonderful denomination and I'm asking that everyone, God, that you will give us all hearts to sit and get on our knees and to offer these new church plants, these six new church plants to you for safekeeping. In Jesus' name. And we thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right, uh, Madam Moderator, that concludes my report. I think they can be seated. Is that, yeah. yeah, you may be seated. Thank you.